All right, so welcome to the February Lunch with Lex session. I am Kate Brock, the Director of the Community Education Center and alumni from the Leadership Program. I will be the technical moderator today on the Zoom call. This program is a modified version of our 10-month Leadership Program. We are excited to share a few snippets and highlights of that um, program through these uh, free monthly one-hour sessions. The leadership program began in 2007 when several local leaders realized the need to create um, a deliberate sort of pipeline and uh, program for growing community leaders who can um, be, you know, have opportunities to learn networking, learn the, the assets of our region, become civic minded individuals and um, help promote um, strengthening our community. Today, it's really exciting because um, almost all of our presenters are actually Leadership County or Leadership Elk and Cameron alumni and would happily tell you that um, they, you know, were probably thinking of running before they did the program, but um, after doing the leadership program, it really spurred them and uh, them the necessary skill sets to make the leap into um, uh, running for some public offices. Okay, so um, today's session is local government, where the rubber meets of the road. And um, as I already said, we've got a lot of LEC alumni today on the call. Um, the first one you're going to hear from is Lou Redkowski. He's going to be the uh, panel moderator of all of our presenters today. Lou is an alumni from the Leadership Elkin Cameron Class 5. And um, Lou is also the most recent city mayor. And um, as of January 1st, he is the interim acting uh, St. Mary City manager. Um, so, and before that, Lou had several years um, on city council. Lots of experience. And um, I'm gonna let you take it from here, Lou. Thanks, Kate, and um, thanks for everybody for putting up with my headset. I know Chris is over there laughing already at me, um, but uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody joining and, and taking the time to learn more about local government. Uh, it's something that I, uh, I've, I've always liked government. I've always been in, engaged and involved in government um, throughout my life, uh, following it, a uh, bit of a, uh, a nerd when it comes to this, uh, this area. Um, and when uh, and after uh, moving back in 2010 and the opportunity to attend LEC 5 with uh, with Kate, um, I ran for city council in 2000. So that that, that LEC uh, session ended in 2012. I ran for city council in 2013, was elected, served as city council from 2014 to 17, and then ran as mayor. And then, um, you know, recently I would have uh, f finished out my term this year. But um, we had our city manager resigned, and I decided to step into that role uh, for the time being until we could find a suitable candidate to uh, sit in the seat to run the city and run the operations part of the city here. Um, so that's where I'm at now. Uh, I think uh, I've, I've gotten a new appreciation for local government and a new appreciation for every, everything that everyone does for not only this city, but for other municipalities all across the Commonwealth. A uh, new appreciation to how we inter interface with the state and how we also interface with the federal levels. So it, it is truly where the rubber meets the road. And I think one um, our first presenter today is someone that has uh, many, many years of experience. And I think the only non-LEC graduate um, that is uh, presenting today, but it's not because of, uh, I, I think his knowledge surpasses anything that uh, any of us would, would be able to share today in terms of uh, the experience and the wisdom that he's honestly been able to provide me um, over the years that I've been involved. So uh, Mr. Tom Wagner is here, a uh, partner with Myron Wagner, uh, Brown and Kraus. Um, he's also the uh, solicitor for the city of St. Mary's, as well as, um, is it still the solicitor for the county, Tom? I don't know. If, is that, okay. And, and also the solicitor for Elk County. So I think he's going to bring in a nice experience, uh, a nice presentation as to what local government is, we're going to spend about uh, you know 20, 25 minutes with Tom right now, and then we'll jump into uh, two other elected officials that are here with us today: Commissioner Fritz Lecker, uh, with the county, with Elk County, and um, also uh, the current mayor of St. Mary's, um, who is um, is is here, uh, Mayor Chris Pletcher. So, uh, Tom, I'll hand it off to you, and uh, we can get going. 
Okay, thank you very much, Lou, and uh, greetings from sunny South Carolina. You'll see behind me on the wall a, a series of lighthouse plaques. Uh, those are not in my office in St. Mary's. I'm actually in South Carolina for the winter, and I really do appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. I wish I could be in the same room with all of you and see your faces, and um, but I guess the times don't allow that to happen right now. Uh, I would emphasize before I start speaking that I am more interested in hearing from you than listening to myself. So please don't hesitate along the way to ask questions and uh, I assume they'll be passed on to me in one way or another because uh, it's more important for you to learn than for me to speak. So um, with that said, uh, Kate has a um, PowerPoint presentation that I put together many years ago uh, for this, this particular day. And uh, it, it is always themed uh, around Valentine's Day because that's usually the time of the year when we have this presentation. And, uh, and today's no different in that respect because Valentine's Day will be soon upon us. Uh, with that in mind, I just want to remind you that don't forget about your significant others because uh, those partners are very important parts of all of our lives. Uh, if you can go to the next slide then, Kate. Um, I, it's not an overstatement to say that I love local government. Uh, I grew up in the 1960s, and uh, the 1960s were a time of, much like today, a time of significant upheaval in our country. And uh, I was studying to be an engineer, had an opportunity to take a course in a constitutional law. And from that, I, I developed an inspiration to, to help to help be useful in my community. And I felt the best way to do that was to be involved in government. Of course, at the time when you study constitutional law, you're talking about the big issues of the day and not about the little ones, but, but it was the, the door that opened for me to become involved in government. Okay, the next slide, please. Now, uh, Kate, if you wanna to move to the next slide. The, um, as I said before, the 1960s were a time of significant upheaval uh, in the United States. And, and these times are really not much different. Uh, I think we all are aware of the, uh, the abiding national issues uh, of the day. The, and here's a list of them. Capitol riot, uh, Congress in gridlock, election fraud claims, the impeachment, which is process, which is ongoing today. Um, the rise of characters like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, and you know, if you watch any of the media, we are being bombarded by um, talking heads and news releases uh, breaking news stories about issues like this at the national level. But I, you should ask a question about that. And that is, how much do any of these issues impact your daily life? Uh, certainly in my case, they don't. Now contrast that though, with things that do matter in your daily life. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, here's a, a list of things that matter to me uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, I'm in South Carolina, so I'm not experiencing the snow right now, but I'll be back in Pennsylvania very shortly. So plowing snow, uh, keeping my family safe, having good schools for my, my children. Of course, they're grown now, but I've got grandkids. Um, having clean and abundant water having parks and playgrounds, uh, places to be active, to stay in good health. Those issues affect my life every day. And I'm sure you can think of many others that affect your life on a daily basis. Now, those kind of issues 
are not issues that your federal government deals with. And for the most part, they're not even issues that your state government deals with. They're, they're issues that uh, where government is involved, uh, those are issues that are managed at the local level. If we'll go to the next slide, please. When I first started doing this presentation, I sat down and I, I thought I'd make a list of the kind of things that, that daily impact lives in our community that are involved with local government. And here you can see the list and you can see that it's a long list and it has to do with everything from public health to public safety, to getting to and from, uh, to having good neighborhoods, good homes to live in, good education, um, and, and uh, you know, safe, uh, safe streets. Uh, there's just a myriad of ways in which uh, local government is involved in our daily lives. So if you go to the next slide, we just talked about how many things that are affected in our daily lives by, uh, by local government and how little perhaps we are affected in our daily lives by what happens at the state and federal levels. This next slide is one that I also developed early on, uh, just as, a, as a, a thought about what happens to the money we pay in taxes every year. Uh, most of us pay property taxes, income taxes, earned income taxes, uh, state income taxes, federal income taxes, all kinds of uh, duties and levies and et cetera, et cetera. But I sat down one day and figured out for the average person, what percentage of my tax revenues are spent at the various levels of government? And this is the pie chart, chart that I came up with. And what it shows is that, at least at the time, and I don't think it's changed a lot since then, but at the time, about 73% of all of the taxes we pay of all kinds go to the federal government. Now, it's not that that's not important because uh, the federal government does things that are important for all of us, but only another 14% goes to the state and and the lowest on the totem pole seems to be local government, where only 13% of tax dollars are spent on local services. Now, that means that, that purse strings, the purse is pretty small for local government. And what that means is, uh, in the end, uh, we can't simply rely on government to do our work for us. We've got to be pitching in too. And uh, that's why local government is important because it's all of us, all of us working together to make our daily lives better. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, uh, and I have to say that one of our presenters and also the, uh, the title of this of this uh, presentation today is plagiarized from this slide uh, that I first put on this uh, in this program a long, long time ago. That the quote where the rubber meets the road is a quote, a statement that I heard made by Senator, US Senator Arlen Specter back in the 1990s. He was at that time running for reelection to the US Senate and he uh, appeared before uh, the, a group of, of uh, actually county officials at the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania and gave a very inspiring talk. But uh, in the end, he made the point, a very strong point, that it's local government where uh, most of the work that is done that helps our citizens. So I don't mind being plagiarized about that. Um, so going back to some of those original slides um, about the, the effect that government has on us, whether at the federal or state level, um, I, I thought about the two big issues of the day, um, 
troubling issues at the federal level, one of those being the Capitol riot and the other being the uh, controversy over election fraud that we've had to deal with for the last three or four months. Uh, and, and one of the observations I had about all of that is that our citizenry knows so very little about our government. You know, back in my day, uh, in the grade school at least, it was common to have a course or, or a study in civics, civics, the understanding of how government works. And I, I fear that our citizens don't have that understanding anymore. And why I fear that is because if our citizens understood government, had some basic knowledge about government, uh, two things would have happened about these two issues I just discussed. Number one is that very few citizens would have been drawn in by these claims of election fraud because they would understand that the way the system of government works, the kinds of claims that were being made about election fraud really had no significant basis. And the other issue is that uh, the feeling from that crowd that started the Capitol riot, that they could go there and that the people who were there, the Congress, the vice president, had the power to overturn the will of the voters. Uh, if, if those people had understood civics from the start, they would know that that power did not exist and what they were advocating for couldn't happen in the riot wouldn't have occurred. So I'm sorry for the aside on that, but civics is important. Understanding government is important. So uh, we're gonna take a real short trip through local government today and help you understand that. So if I could go to the next slide, please. So what is local government? Well, uh, this particular slide is a map that's posted in the uh, recorder, used to be posted in the recorder of deeds office in Al County. And it is a territorial map of Elk County. I don't know how many of our participants are from Elk County or, or whether they're from neighboring counties. And I'm sure there are similar, map, similar maps for the other counties. But this particular map shows the territorial governments in Elk County. And you can see that there are a, a number of Townships, uh, Highland, Spring Creek, Millstone, Jones, the ones in the southern tier of the, of the uh, county. Those are townships. We have St. Mary's, which is a city. We have uh, Ridgeway Borough and we have Johnson Boroughs. Those are territorial local governments. But there's a lot more to local government than what you see on this map. If you go to the next slide, please. Local governments are, are basically split up either based on territory or sometimes based on subject matter. Uh, I've listed a couple here. Uh, as far as ter territorial is concerned, you've seen the map, the previous slide. But as far as subject matter is concerned, certain bodies of local government uh, extend their jurisdiction beyond territorial limits or territorial boundaries. Uh, just for example, uh, utility services in St. Mary's, we have the St. Mary's Area Water Authority. That's a, a body of local government. Their job is to manage the public water system, not only in St. Mary's, but also in Fox Township. And I think it may even stretch into some of the surrounding municipalities too. Uh, education, uh, for example, uh, in St. Mary's, we have the St. Mary's Area School District, but that, that is a branch of local government, but it actually encompasses not only the city of St. Mary's, but also uh, Benazet Township, Fox Township, and um, <laughs> portions. Now, I think that's, that's the only additional, uh, town, additional townships. We also have some government organizations, local government, that really don't have territory at all. They really just function to provide a particular service uh, 
two of those that come to mind are the Densington Township Golf Authority, which, which is responsible for the Bavarian Hills Golf Course. Also the St. Mary's Airport, there's a, a, a municipal authority that's created for the purpose of managing that airport. Some local government uh, organizations deal with particular, particular projects. And those, for example, would be like redevelopment authorities, uh, the Elk County Housing Authority. Those are examples of those. So if we'll go to the next slide. Um, in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Constitution says that the legislature has the power and the obligation to provide for local government. It's a very simple statement. And how they do that is uh, what they have done through legislation is they have created a number of different entities which can exercise local government powers. And, and uh, you got a little ahead of me there. Thank you. Uh, on that list are the four basic categories of local government counties, uh, in this case, Elk County or in Cameron County, if you're from that area. Uh, municipalities, we saw the map before that showed us the city of St. Mary's, the boroughs of, of uh, Johnstonburg and Ridgeway and the townships. Uh, and the, the legislature also allows for home rule entities, St. Mary's, is a home rule charter community. And if we have time, we'll discuss that later. Uh, school districts, the legislature provided for those to manage school systems. And the legislature also provided for various types of authorities, mostly municipal authorities, like the water authority we discussed or the airport authority. Uh, but they've also allowed for industrial development authorities. There is an industrial development authority which should develop the Elk Haven Industrial Park. That's not correct. The Elk County Industrial Park out on West Creek Road. <clears throat> and there's also redevelopment authorities which we have at both the city and the county level. So who's in charge of these local governments? On the next slide, uh, what we see is that uh, different governmental entities have different entities are different groups in charge. The county is run by three county commissioners, the city of St. Mary's by seven council members, uh, the boroughs by either seven or nine council members, and uh, in both cases, a mayor. We have a mayor in St. Mary's as well. Townships usually have three or five supervisors. All of those are elected officials. On the other side, we have authorities and, and they're appointed. Uh, the elected officials appoint them to their office. Generally, they serve for five year terms. Okay, so that's, that's basically how governments come into existence. Now, um, I've always thought, and the next slide, I've always thought that there was a misunderstanding among the citizenry about how government is organized. Most people think of government as a pyramid. Uh, you have the federal government at the top, and then you have the states underneath that, and then below that you have the local governments, which are the counties and municipalities. To some extent that is true, um, but we often get, uh, for example, at the county level, uh, we often get uh, citizens who show up and ask a demand, more likely, the county commissioners do certain things uh, for their benefit. More often than not, though, uh, what they're asking for is something that the county, county can't do. That, that either has to be done by another branch of local government or has to be done by the state or federal government above. So it's not like things automatically filter down through. In fact, uh, there, are, there is filtering down through, which you'll see on the next slide. Uh, and that is uh, the issue of unfunded mandates. Uh, haven't heard that term much in the last couple of years, but it, it is a, as uh, Fritz Lecker could certainly uh, explain to you, 
unfunded mandates are a, a difficult issue for local governments because basically what they are is situations where either the federal government or the state government says to the locals, this is what you're going to do. More often than not, when they give you that order to do it, they don't give you the money to pay for it. Uh, some good examples of that um, are, are one that we're seeing right now uh, that's having a tremendous impact on, it, on, our, on, our, on our entire country, and that is um, the management of the pandemic. Um, that is an issue that could have been managed at the federal level, level but the states, uh, I'm sorry, the federal government instead passed that responsibility on to the states and unfortunately didn't provide the money uh, to fund the rollout of the vaccination program. And, and if you watch the news lately, you understand how that created a big problem and a lot of, uh, a lot of uncertainty and uh, disharmony throughout the states. Uh, some other examples are the mandates that, are, that come from the states down to the local governments. Uh, one of those involves the conducting of elections. Uh, both the federal government, mostly the state government, to some extent the federal governments have mandated or do mandate counties to conduct elections, but they generally don't provide the money that's needed to do that. Recently uh, in our county and all the counties in Pennsylvania, uh, counties have had to purchase uh, completely new array of voting machines so that they would be a paper verifiable ballot for everyone. For everyone who voted, there would be paper record of how they voted. And uh, unfortunately, the states didn't also provide sufficient funds to pay for that. So the counties had to borrow money in order to provide for sufficient election machines. Uh, Sewage enforcement is another example of where the state mandates local governments to take care of the disposition of sewage, whether it's on lot or, or whether you put it into the sanitary system, sewer system and send it down to the treatment plant. Uh, the state says you must do those things to local government, but it doesn't provide the money to do it. Okay, um, that's unfunded mandates and that's how government works. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Tom, just if I can interrupt there, I, just to let everybody know, I've been dealing with the, the unfunded mandates on the wastewater plant just recently, mm -hmm. and that a lot of businesses, uh, not a lot, we have uh, you know businesses in town that are managed because of their industrial uh, water that they put out. They have certain levels of chemicals that can come down into the wastewater plant. Those mandates are set by the EPA. Um, so at the federal level, the EPA is saying, hey, you to operate your wastewater plant, you need to have these provisions in place. And then we go to them and say, okay, well, what are you gonna to do to help us monitor and manage that? And they say, nothing, we're not gonna help you at all. It's up to you to figure it out. So it's it's uh, kind of a, an interesting um, an interesting dynamic that definitely as to, as to how we, uh, as we move forward that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and I know, and Tom, just so just a time check, you know, a couple, I think we have a couple more minutes and then we'll move on okay. to difference. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna move on. If we'll go on to the next slide, just real quickly. Uh, I also don't want to, to step on anybody else's shoes. Um, how government uh, is, uh, I talked about this before, so you can go on to the next slide a while. Uh, the legislature has to provide for local government and they do that through various laws uh, that have to uh, be followed. So. You know, uh, we have municipal codes for each level of uh, local government. And those laws tell your local elected officials what they can do and not do. Uh, you can't do anything you wanna do as a local elected official. You have limits on what you can do. And uh, those are the kind of uh, different laws that they are. You know, um, actually, uh, I don't know, I hope Fritz is gonna talk about a little bit about the structure of county government because that's usually what is presented on this day. Uh, and uh, if, if not, if we have time at the end, I can come back and discuss those issues. Um, and I, I think really that's all of the important things I wanted to say. Uh, I do hope that uh, what you take away from this presentation today from all the presenters 
is how important it is for you to be involved in local government uh, because it does mean uh, everything to our daily lives. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. I, I appreciate it. And as always, it's a it's definitely a good reminder for all of us. So thanks. Thanks a lot. And um, and uh, so I, I think uh, Commissioner Lecker, I think we'll go next. Uh, Commissioner Lecker was elected as county commissioner. Um, uh, what was it? 2019, Fritz? And then you, you came into office 2020. And, um, you know, so we're relying on her to uh, help uh, keep the county in order and work with all the different uh, departments there at the county. So, uh, Commissioner Lecker, feel free to take it away. I think you're on mute there, Fritz, if you want to come off. Okay. okay. There you go. Uh, there, I lost you for a second. Um, so thanks, everybody. I forget you were asking me a question right there, Lou. Anyway, um, I'd like to thank Community Ed Council for um, the inv inv invitation to participate today. For the, those of you who may not know me, I'm Fritz Lecker. After working for State Representative Matt Gobbler for 12 years, I was elected to serve as Elk County Commissioner and just completed my first four year term. And Lou or Kate, if you wanna hold that slide till, till a little bit later, I don't wanna give up all my good stuff right now. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, I am a LEC alumni, alumnus. I, I had heard about LEC, uh, I spoke to many who took the course and because my job at the time was supported by tax dollars, I wasn't permitted to take the time off to participate in LEC. Um, I'm a very curious person. I like to keep learning and I felt that LEC would be very worthwhile to me. So I saved up my vacation days over the course of several years. And I also paid the admission fee out of my own pocket um, so I could attend LEC. If any of you who are participating today and maybe not since this is an off year, but for, for those of you who have an employer that pays your tuition to LEC, um, you should take just a moment and be grateful and thankful about that. Think about that. Evidently, your employer sees something in you that they feel is worth investing in. Now, more than ever, we need leaders who care about their corner of the world. By working and advocating for local issues, you have tremendous opportunity to keep up the good things, to keep the good things going and learn what, learn what needs to be scrapped or tuned up and fixed. It's a big responsibility, but the world is run by those who show up. I'm kind of grateful that I get to follow attorney Tom Wagner. Um, he's a huge advocate for the community and the county of Elk. He has been our solicitor for many years now, and he's been invaluable to me as commissioner during my first year. Um, when I was in LEC, attorney Wagner made a presentation and one of his handouts was this flow chart on the organization of county government. I show you this because I have it on my bulletin board, even after a year, 14 months in office, and I still refer to it now and then. So you can always learn something and you can always keep what you learn. Let's see. I've been asked to speak today about county government and its relation to the state government and how LEC played a role in my time with Rep Gobbler and now at the county. While I've not had any formal education after high school, and I make no apologies for that, I was fortunate to have been a successful small business owner for many years. I was selected at the state level as one of the best 50 best women in business by the Department of Community and Economic Development. In 2008, I was invited to interview for a position with our newly elected state representative, Matt Gobbler. I was hired and went on to become his district manager for over a decade. Moving from business owner to state government was an eye opener for me. I learned many things. I met many people. The most important thing I learned was that I didn't need to be afraid or intimidated to ask questions. 
I learned that there are folks in every level of government who are there to help. By help, I mean that they take their job seriously. They believe in what they do. They believe in the programs they're advocating for and the services they're offering. They will take the time to answer any questions you might have. They don't expect you to know everything right away, but and they are willing to teach you what you don't know. As far as moving from state, state government over to my new role as county commissioner, I found that those same principles apply. My participation in LEC was especially meaningful because it came at a time in my life when I'd, be, when I'd begun to learn the inner workings of government. LEC really taught me how much I didn't know about my community. LEC introduced me to many players I wasn't even aware of. But I think the most important thing I learned from LEC was that people are approachable. They want the world to know what they're working on. They want to teach others what they feel is important. They're happy to help you learn what you don't know. I apply these principles in countless circumstances each and every day in the course of my job and outside my job as well. I, it's in a community, um, government is very important, but in a community, community service is also very important. And I think attorney Wagner could be um, our local icon for community service. So your job is important, government is important, but your role in the community is not limited to your day job. County and state gov governments are intertwined at many levels. Luck gave me the confidence to relax and take the time I needed to learn about the next issue I wanted to tackle. They gave me the confidence to reach out to those knowledgeable on the subject or the players who, all, who, who were already at the table. So in summary, I will leave you with the following thoughts. So if I could have my slide, please. Basically, the world is run by those who show up. Filmmaker Woody Allen said in 1977, showing up is 80% of life, and that's very true. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to admit that you don't know everything about everything. And don't let that stop you from going to a meeting that you're interested in, but don't know anyone else that might be there. One of the most important things I've learned is government Government at every level is simply a group of people who are working together for a common good. People who are good at their job are thrilled when someone new comes in with the sincere desire to learn, and they'll usually be happy to act as a mentor. We all want the world to be a better place. Luck gives you an overview of many things about our community, so please get involved in any area that interests you. Tiny interactions on your part can lead to some wonderful experiences. All you have to do is take the first step and you can make a big difference. So basically that's my whole presentation. Um, I, I guess we'll wait till the end for any questions, correct? Yep, that's correct. And um, thank you. The participants, just a quick reminder, if you think of questions, please feel free to enter them into the chat um, if you want to put them in now or you can wait and then um, take yourself off mute um, when we're done with the last speaker here coming up. Thanks and thanks, Commissioner Lecker. That's a uh, great uh, points and, and, and very inspiring as to uh, hopefully getting folks a little bit more involved in government. I know one of the joys that I've had over the the several years um, of my recent involvement is the, you know, working with Mr. Wagner, um, you know, working with yourself as a county commissioner, as well as past county commissioners, but also Representative Gobbler and newly re elected Representative Arminini, building a relationship with Senator Dush, um, and then also, you know, forging those relationships at the federal level. You know, I've had the, 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 the joy of meeting, um, uh, meeting and, and working with uh, Representative Thompson, uh, meeting Senator Toomey and, and working with his staff and then um, and also, you know, having some face time with Governor Wolf a few years ago when he was looking at uh, different ways to fund some infrastructure programs here in, in the rural areas. So it just having the, that that uh, that ability to um, be with the folks who can help make those decisions and uh, 
you know, empower an area, empower a region is, uh, is, is fantastic. And um, I guess one, one last person I'd like to thank too is, is uh, Kate. Um, you know, she and I've been kind of traveling this road together for the last few years and, um, you know, we've been involved in different boards together and I think we've been there uh, to help each other out. So Kate, I just want to say thanks again for all the support in local government as well. Our next speaker um, is uh, the current mayor of City of St. Mary's is uh, Chris Pletcher. He'll be uh, talking through, I think, some of those opportunities that uh, Commissioner Lecker alluded to and some of the ways that local government uh, can affect your life, as, uh, as uh, Mr. Wagner has discussed as well. And I, I do have to, like, a, a, with my life, uh, things change at a moment's notice. Um, I'm going to have to log off now because I got a text saying, hey, we got an urgent issue at home. I got to go run home and help my wife take care of it. So um, I, I think those of you who know me know that that's... Uh, understandable. <laughs> um, so I apologize for leaving. If there are any questions, please feel free to, to reach out. Um, Kate has my contact information as well. I think a lot of you probably already have it as well. Um, so please always feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to uh, answer those questions as we go. But what I'll do is I'll hand it off to Mayor Pletcher and, and Mayor Pletcher is going to uh, take us take us home. So Thank thanks. You. Go ahead, Chris. Thank you, Lou, for working today. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to be the last and least speaker of today's panel. It's nice that you had really a, an all-star group here between Tom and Lou and Fritz, and I was fortunate to be asked to, to chime in and participate a little bit here. And so it's my honor and privilege to be here today. Uh, Kate, would you mind pulling up the slides that I sent? Otherwise, I can share my screen if it's easier. <clears throat> Actually, Chris, you can go ahead and share your screen. Okay, let me do that. Can everybody see this okay? Yep, looks good. All right, great. So uh, unlike Fritz, I, I don't wanna save all my good stuff for last because really I don't have much good stuff. So I just wanna put it right up in front. Uh, I just have a few slides here. I'll walk you through this. And really, we're just going to cover three major things. I want to give you a quick background about myself. Uh, I'd like to talk briefly just about uh, what city council is and some of the, the things that we've done over the past uh, few years in my involvement in city council. And then I'm going to talk about you and your future and how you could get involved in the city. We'll start off here with the, the headline, a transplant with a vision for the city. <clears throat> One of the most noteworthy things in this area about about me is that I'm not from here. And most of the people that, uh, that are longstanding members of the community uh, have been homegrown and are very familiar with Elk County. And uh, for me, that was not the case. My, my wife is from Elk County and that was what brought us here. But I'm originally from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is in the South Central part of the state. <laughs> and since graduating from high school, I've bounced around quite a bit and I've seen a lot of the United States. I've lived in six states. Uh, I've lived in three major cities, um, all on the East Coast predominantly, uh, Philly, New York, and Boston. Uh, and really had never been north of Route 80 on, in, in Pennsylvania before moving here. Uh, but realized that there is there's quite a bit here in this part of the state that is, is so rich and just offers a, a really nice um, just a really nice offering of what you can do and how you can get involved. And if you can have a really nice life and involvement in your community anywhere in the state, and in particular in Elk County and Cameron County. And so uh, what brought me here is my wife's family business. We decided to get back involved in that. And that was back in 2016 or 2015, 2016, which is right when I got involved in LEC. And so uh, I think I'm personally a little bit biased, but I think LEC 10 is probably the, the best class that we've had in the history of LEC. Uh, I think Fritz will agree with me on that one. Um, and it's, it's been great. It was a great way for me to get involved right from the beginning. Uh, but the family business I mentioned did sponsor me and allowed me to participate in this. And it was just a, an immediate way to see the, the kaleidoscope of different offerings that this community has. <clears throat> Everything from uh, the police to arts and, and tourism to the city government, et cetera, and everything in between. I called it a 360 degree community view. And really it was just a, an initial introduction to this area and all of the hidden treasures that are here. While I was going through LEC, I was looking for opportunities to get involved in the community. 
Is that I want to be on the board of a nonprofit? That I want to volunteer at a, a local organization? Or do I want to do something that was a little bit more impactful in, on the city level? And that was something that I was trying to figure out during LEC. And as each passing month went by, I was essentially trying it on. Is this the area that I should get involved? Is this the area that I got involved? And once we got to local government day, we had the benefit of a very similar uh, presentation from attorney Wagner. And it was just, it, it just clicked, the penny dropped. And I said, this is really where I wanna be. Local government has a lot of really uh, neat opportunities here. And city council was the, the platform or the opportunity that I wanted to get involved in. And actually, I think that local government day was actually held in the council room. And that was my first time seeing kind of the, the inside workings in person. And it, it just, uh, just felt right and captivated me. Uh, shortly thereafter, we had a, an interview with the city manager at the time, Tim Pearson, who was offering a LEC project. And I, I made it pretty clear that I wanted to be involved in that LEC project with the city. And it was just a, a great way for me to identify that this was the area I wanted to get involved in. So I encourage you to think through this, uh, if, if whether city or local government in some way is a way that you want to get involved. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. <clears throat> Leading up to this, this is why I was in LEC before I, I ended up filing a petition. Uh, I did want to connect with city, civic leaders to understand what was going on in the political landscape. So how is city government run? How is it structured? Who has what positions, what responsibilities? And it allowed me to build a network of supporters. And so Lou was at the time on council and decided to run for, for mayor. And he and I uh, got connected and he was a, a huge advocate for me and uh, helped me to get involved. And we were able to campaign together to some extent. <clears throat> uh, and uh, Tom was certainly an advisor and was just a great resource to be able to understand more about how the mechanics of civic leadership worked. And then Fritz was in my class and she had expressed an interest at that time of potentially running for county commissioner in the future. And so uh, between her experience there or her interest there and then her involvement with uh, Representative Gobbler, she was a great resource as well, encouraging me uh, to, to go out there and run. And she actually was kind enough to put us one of my political signs in her yard during the campaign. So thank you again, Fritz, for doing that. Uh, and then that just led to filing petitions and running successfully in 2016 while still in LEC, while wrapping it up. So uh, I mentioned that because the timing is almost identical for when you're hearing this presentation to when I filed my petitions back when I was in LEC. So keep that in mind that if you have an interest in doing something like this, uh, that you would be looking to you know, get your petition going now. The time is of the essence. So what is city council and how does it factor into the leadership for the city? Uh, essentially, it's the board of directors for the city. And so um, <clears throat> Solicitor Wagner made a good uh, analogy for me that helped me understand how, how the government works in the sense that you have the taxpayers, which function like the shareholders, you have the council, which functions like a board of directors, and then you have the manager, which functions like the president of the company. It's very much a private sector, public sector analog. <clears throat> and really the, the city council is charged with setting the tone and the vision for the city staff. It's, it's high level enough that you can chart out a multi-year strategy, but it's still uh, close enough to the city staff relations with the manager that you can have a great influence on what goes on in a day-to-day -day basis in support of the manager. And, excuse me, it's really about serving the residents with thoughtful leadership. And if you can bring that, that level of perspective every day, you know, doing your homework, reading the packets, and um, making sure you're informed about issues before walking into the council room, uh, you're, you're doing a, a favor to every one of the residents of the city or the municipality if, if you live elsewhere. And you're also charged with crafting legislation and managing finances, or, or maybe even better said, stewarding the finances for long-term success. <clears throat> so some key achievements, I'll just rattle these off. It's a little bit of a brag sheet, but it's, these are things that we've done uh, just in recent years in city council 
that I think have really helped to take us to the next level and put us in a great position to succeed in the future as a city. And it just gives you an idea of some of the things that we've been involved in uh, beyond just the, you know, the, the mundane tasks of approving, approving subdivisions and some other things. So it's a little bit more high level. Uh, shortly after getting involved, we created a vision for the year 2030. And we said that we wanted to emphasize the growth in population, which is somewhat of a reverse of the trend that we've had since the 1970s. We wanted to have better engagement of the community and we wanted to have more efficient operations in the city. And so setting that vision allowed us to have a clear uh, framework that we could then start to structure legislation and initiatives behind that, was, that would help us to take the city in a better direction. And so we've been doing that, executing on that vision for the last three years now and into this fourth year of the term. And uh, I, th I think it's been extremely helpful to know where the goalposts are that we're shooting for instead of just kind of letting the wind carry us. Uh, we also instituted quality of life ticketing, which was really to encourage some more courteous, neighborly neighborhood behaviors instead of having a, a very long and uh, disjointed uh, process for somebody to have a complaint and have some, some behavioral things addressed. We now have just a very quick way for the city to address somebody that's, you know, that's not taking care of their yard or, or doing some things that would be inconvenient or a nuisance to the, the neighbors. We have new parks, new downtown park that's been renovated and implemented. We you know, purchased some, some land and some real estate and have cleared that area out. And that's going to be an, an ongoing uh, development with that park. You know, we're, we're shooting toward having uh, a fitness park down there. We're shooting toward also having a, an amphitheater for live music. And uh, we've also put in a walking bridge to make the downtown area more connected by foot, which is which has been a great initiative. Uh, we have streamlined some ordinances. We have updated the, the code to make it more reflective of how the city is functioning today versus how it was uh, when it was originally structured back in 1994. We've had some major projects on the traffic improvements. We did some studies using uh, PennDOT engineering and we were awarded a $5 million grant from the state to have a, a Route 120 connector project to redirect um, semi-truck traffic instead of going through the diamond to bypass that and be able to connect right over to Brussels Street. So that project is coming up in the next year or two. Uh, financial planning, we've done some revisions to sewer rates, making it a little bit uh, more of a flat rate, less of a financial burden or administrative burden for most residents and for our city staff. And then uh, we've been continuing to manage our pensions, tax planning. We've had improved services for residents in the, the form of leaf cleanup. Uh, we've, we signed a deal with Xeno Media for a fiber optic internet to everybody's home over the course of three years, updated street lights, et cetera. And then lastly, <clears throat> looking at our, our operations, trying to make sure that we've got people in the right seats, you know, the right people, the right seats. We've created a, a parks director, an economic development director, and have, have worked to try to restructure how our city staff works to make it all flow, make it all work extremely. So just to give you a little flavor of some of the things that we've done just in the last three years and what you might be involved in if you are in city council. So the, the charge to you is to get involved. And you've heard that from, from Tom, you heard that from Fritz. And the question is just how you'll get involved, not whether you will. And as you know, LEC is really a development program for future community leaders, which is you. You wouldn't be involved if you didn't have, uh, if you hadn't been identified as someone that would be a future leader. And now it's just a matter of getting you into the right uh, arena to be able to, to express your skills and make a contribution. I will let you know that we do have four vacancies opening on city council at the end of this year. And so I'd encourage you, if you have any interest in local government to consider running and you just have to get your petitions going. And, and, and I know it can be done while you're doing LEC as well. <clears throat> We're also in the midst of hiring a full-time city manager, which you know, depending on your skill set and your background and experience, uh, potentially there's somebody on the phone here that would be a good fit for that. Uh, we. I, I don't think that we have an active project between the city and the leadership of Cameron and, and Elk, 
but we do have a history of projects of that nature. And so we, maybe we could get another service project going. And then in addition to that, within the city, we have uh, various community organizations. So that would be municipal authorities, commissions, and uh, those have different responsibilities, but essentially it's a mini board of directors, if you will, a mini council related to one specific aspect of the city. So you can see them listed there. Uh, if anything seems to uh, pique your interest, please reach out. We often have available spots on any and all of those, those commissions or municipal authorities. That is the end of, of what I have for you. I, I do want to say thank you again for inviting me to, to speak here and to be a part of this. I, I believe LEC is a, a wonderful asset to our community. And you know, Kate does a fantastic job with organizing it every year. And despite the challenges of this year, I'm glad to see that we still have a healthy participation and look forward to seeing what comes out of LEC class of 2021. Thank you again, Chris. Um, that was that was great. Um, yeah, thank you for highlighting all of the the work of the council, um, but also your background, you know, and how you came from outside of the area, but you care just as much about this area as anybody um, who grew up here. And so, um, thank you to Tom and. Fritz as well. Um, just a couple quick notes. I know we're a couple minutes over one o'clock right now. Um, uh, Jackie Herb Street um, uh, reminded me that, uh, well, actually, I don't think I ever knew this. I never asked. Tom actually did the first Government Day presentation for the first LEC class. So Tom has been helping program every year uh, since, since our first year. So thank you very much. Um, in fact, I think we should get you uh, lined up for an honorary LEC uh, completion certificate. The, the, the best gift, the best gift you could ever give me is to have these students be involved in their local governments. That's why we do this, because it's so important. And Fritz, I remember when you, when you were talking that you had said, I think you were on the chamber board when the elect program was getting formed. The coin as to which chamber board member was going to go to the first class of LEC because the chamber was going to pay for one person. And you lost the coin toss. Egg Stoffer. Uh, coin toss. That's right. That's right. But that's okay. It made me want it all the more. And I just have to throw this in when when I was at the government day in the city council room. It, in my luck class and, and attorney Wagner spoke, I think I mentioned to him that I was interested in running for commissioner. And that was in the, the beginning of the meeting. And he just said, oh, okay. And then I thought, holy cow, that wasn't a great response. And then at the very end of the meeting, I was happy. I, I walked past him and he says, you know, Fritz, I think you'll make a great commissioner. So that was, that was I mean, luck is wonderful in so many ways for giving people the confidence to go forward. Wonderful. This was just such a great commercial for the leadership program. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I really appreciate that. And thank you, Marcy. Uh, Marcy was actually, is actually also another, Marcy Aceta is a, a LEC alumni as well. And um, she's on our advisory committee for the leadership program. And this was her day to, um, to kind of kick off and coordinate. So thank you, Marcy, for reaching out to this really great group of folks. Um, and let's see. Um, so with that, you know, I think we'll wrap this session up. Next month's session is in March um, and, and it will be um, a focus on local arts. Uh, the title is Enjoy a Creative Lunch with LEC. And we will be talking with Jesse Gradle with Gallery 29 and also Michaela Poland, who runs PA Made. And so um, hopefully we'll, you know, get some neat tips. I'm not saying we'll all end up being artists by the end of it, but at least we'll maybe be a little bit more uh, informed and, and maybe learn something we didn't know before we started the launch session. All right, well, once again, thank you for joining us today. Um, I did get a couple comments or questions over the chat about following up with a couple presenters on some of the resources that you shared. 
Um, so I will be sending um, that correspondence out to you um, before the end of the day. All right, well, thank you again, everybody. And um, we'll see you next month. Thank you, Kate. Thanks, everybody. Um, thank you, bye.